conferences should be regional. Literally, the whole point of having conferences is that they're regional. Hell, there's a reason some conferences literally have their location in the name, like the Southeastern Conference, the Atlantic Coast Conference, or I don't know, the Mountain West Conference. Geography should matter because regionality produces the most intense rivalries. Teams go up and down from a success standpoint. College football is cyclical, sports in general, pretty much. But the location of the game and the, and the teams amplifies the intensity of the matchups. It's one thing to get in a fight with someone who lives across town. It's another to get in a fight with your neighbor because you have to live amongst them. You see them every day. You have to deal with the gloating or the trash talk on a consistent basis. It's a part of your life. Not to mention the travel problems for the smaller sports and the toll it's going to take on student athletes having to go from one coast to the other. I mean, at this point, why don't we just take all of the top college football teams and just make them independents? I mean, we're heading towards super conferences, probably two at the end of the day with tons of teams in them. So it's basically the same thing. We start a 12-team playoff next year, and we could just use the same ranking system to determine who makes it in. We have totally negated the main reason we have conferences. But they won't go back to regionality because of the TV deals. And I'm not saying that TV is the only one to blame for this. It's the people who make the decisions at the highest level. There's multiple hands and multiple buckets here. We basically have blind people driving a Ferrari when it comes to decision makers in college football. Now, the matchups are still going to be great. We no longer have a true need for conferences. I mean, that's just the truth, other than another way to funnel money. And I'm not stupid. I know this is all about money. Everything is. And once the ball's kicked off, we'll divert our attention, and thank goodness for that. But from a 30,000-foot view, conferences mean nothing anymore. We're talking about Stanford and Cal on the West Coast going to the Atlantic Coast Conference. It means nothing. It's basically become a high school party where all the cool kids get invited, while the others have to eat pudding by themselves like Steven Glansberg. We should just totally get rid of conferences at the highest level of the college football. Because at least at this point, it would save us a lot of damn time and a lot of talking points. <laughs> and with, that, with that note, I'm going to bring in former Michigan quarterback, my co-host David Cohn, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, the third tip of the spear here, Blaine Crane. Guys, we hear the rest of the Pac-12 is going to merge with the AAC. Stanford and Cal's, who's on the West Coast, like I mentioned, Palo Alto and Berkeley is going to head over to the good old Atlantic Coast Conference. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have a globe or a map to realize that doesn't exactly work out. So from a, a regionality standpoint, do we, if this continues to go this way, which it looks like it is, we have to change the name of the conferences, right? <laughs> There's no way. Does the ACC just go to the All Coast mm. Conference? Maybe. Well, look. By the time I finish this sentence, there will be more conference realignment. So you know, take all of this with a grain of salt. But yeah, you're right. The the ACC on the Atlantic Coast is now considering adding Stanford and Cal, but the AAC, the American Conference, also wants to get involved in some of the carcass that's left from the Pac-12. We also heard you know a possibility of what if the Mountain West and the remaining four teams in the Pac-12 form the Pac-16 or something. That would make sense. We have a graphic of that that we could pull up and see what that looks like. But yeah, I mean, look, I do agree with you. It was always silly to name conferences after numbers. That to me is the worst. And look, I played in the Big Ten. I never played in the Big Ten one snap where we had 10 teams. Yeah. There were always 11, and they tried to be creative with an 11 in between the 10. There's always going to be more you know, teams coming and going that you can have for a number. But it seemed like, at least geographically, the Southeastern Conference was pretty set, and the Atlantic Coast Conference is pretty set. Well, even that is, is gone by the wayside now. And it's really, from, from my perspective, twofold. One, we wanted to uh, identify a true national champion, which only seemed fair. If you're going to have this many teams around the country mm -hmm. and we're going to say, you know, oh, no, my team won the national championship in 1997 or no, my team won the national championship. Well, we need to have some sort of format that, you know, identifies a true national champion. Uh, and that's what the BCS era was created for. Where we grew up pre-BCS era, you know, you had too many teams uh, both claiming national championships in, a, in, a, in a, a calendar year. And that BCS system proved to be flawed. 
I don't have to tell you guys, Auburn fans didn't get a shot to play USC in 2004 despite being undefeated. That led to the 14 playoff we have now, and even that's going to get expanded. So when teams are looking around saying, wait, if we're going to have a true national champion and we're going to have a playoff to determine it, that's more important than just winning my conference anymore. I want to be where there's the most revenue so I can get the best player so I can win that national championship, right? That one, and then the second for me is uh, cable cutting. I mean, the entire, the way we view media now has completely changed in the last decade. There's no more cable. It's all streaming services. Look at our show right now. We're streaming. We're streaming right now. Yeah, they are. And so all of these streaming services want to package together the best products they can because there's only so much time in the day and you only have so much money to spend. And so when you're trying to allocate these different things, you have schools like a Texas and Oklahoma are looking around saying, hey, if we package ourselves with Alabama and LSU and Georgia, we can make $80 $80 million a year or something close. But if we package ourselves with Texas Tech or Baylor or Oklahoma State, we're going to make $30 million a year. We need to make a change. And now you're seeing everyone scramble to do so. Uh, Blaine, if, if we're heading toward two super conferences where half the teams are in one conference and half the teams are in another conference, why, why don't we just blow up conferences altogether? Well, why wouldn't it just be independent? Why don't you just play a 12-game regular season schedule because the, the opponents, I mean, if you have half the teams in your conference, you're basically playing all over the country anyway. Why do we even need it? You can have Fox do half the broadcast, ESPN do half the broadcast. Why do we even need conferences? Why do we need the Pac-16? Why do we need the SEC? Let's just go independent, man. You're right. It's no, the same thing. I mean, it's a real uh, Kelly Clarkson situation. It really is. I mean, miss independent here. I mean, it's go like, I like the regional idea. I really do, but it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Well, it did happen. Now it's not yeah, happening. From a money standpoint, it'll never happen. From a TV deal standpoint, it'll never happen. Do y'all worry about when it comes to regional stuff, like like the, the competitiveness of certain teams and conferences? Well, like, I think it goes Could they maintain now. the competitiveness? I mean, you look at Alabama, where they were before Nick Saban, and now they get up, and then Georgia, and then they get up. I think it's all cyclical. It's why people be running the triple option here in 30 years anyway. But but another one that, that I find that I find interesting when you, when you look at, at this is, at at what point too, when you have you know these these teams that are kind of aligning with each other and all right, well we want to play uh, USC wants to go to the Big Ten. At what point could you just separate football from the other sports? Yes, that's yeah. what I was like like if if you have if you say okay, well we want to, how would that work though? It'd be very difficult because like you and I've talked about these are public institutions. It's not yeah, private. That's it's not saying. like the like, NFL made a minor league and now we're having all these problems. These were schools, they're universities, they receive public funding. So now it's hard to go backwards and fix all the problems. You talk about building the parachute on the way down. Sometimes they're not even building a parachute, they're just falling. But I agree with you 100%, you have to treat football different. Not just because it's the biggest revenue driver, because it's different in its identity. You, can only play, you can't play any more games, basically, than we're playing, and you can't play them any more frequently than we're already playing. So that, and also, guys, I'm telling you, I know it seems like a crazy outside-the-box idea, but the more and more I start thinking about this, the more I start thinking that relegation, a relegation system yeah. could potentially work in college football. I don't think it can work in baseball, <sighs> much or, you know I don't think it can work in the NFL or other professional sports leagues baseball is a little bit different when you start talking about their minor league but college football you asked a good question can these teams if you were to go back to a regional approach under one big you know ESPN or Fox merger or whatever you just had college football away from the all the other sports and you went back and you broke it up regionally kind of like we've always had would the teams be able to remain competitive and have parity well, in a relegation system, you could. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the group of five winner who moves up is competitive more than the So, so the my, my, the, my only pushback, and, and there's a few things I think you have to tweak, but whenever you're overhauling a system like that, if you only have a few things to tweak, you're in a good situation. With relegation is, if we're going to have relegation, that means you have to separate the power five and the group of five champion. That means that the group of five cannot win a national championship against the power five. Which they're already not well, doing. Well, I mean, you know, Cincinnati did make the playoff, and then they get moved up. You talk about relegation. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see what there's, I'm saying? There's like, not even a possibility. There's not even a possibility, or that takes away the whole point of relegation. Is there not, though? Because the best team, let's just take Cincinnati from, and I'm playing this out in real time. You may be right. Cincinnati from a season ago could have still made the playoff, um, and still possibly 
already qualified to move up the next well, year. Well, then then what's the what's the downside of getting moved down to group of five if you still have a chance to win the Power Five championship? Possibly like, what is it? only TV deals and scheduling. But like, Maybe let's say is. let's say Notre Dame's the worst the worst team and mm-hmm. and just to run this ground ball out let's say Notre Dame's the worst team in the power five and they get relegated down I mean Notre Dame's a weird one too well well yeah like what if it's a bigger school like it's not yeah I guess it's not you're always saying, so you're saying you school. can't vie for the you can't have two separate leagues and still everyone vie for the same championship yes that's yeah what we'll saying. see what I've been saying is we need a group of five champion anyway and see if that's if that's what you're saying then relegation works in that way mm-hmm. it works in that way I just I look at what Tulane can possibly do. I look at Cincinnati get, getting in. But they would be up this year because up. Tulane balled last year. No, no. And, so and, it was the bottom three teams. And I get, the, and I get that, but still uh, you'd have to have a one, separation. One, I think. And we're going to release the graphic because our boy Cody Nason put this together. Yep. So yep. let's just do a whole breakdown segment on we'll, we'll do a whole breakdown. I don't want to dive too deep. It's a, it's a fascinating yeah. discussion. At first, when Danny Kell and some people were bringing it up, I was like, no. I didn't was even too. give it the time of day. And you kind of look, well, you look at where college football is now and there's so much changing. You're like, what's... Well, it solves that biggest problem that I've been talking to you guys about, that there are too many teams vying for one championship. That's what I keep saying. There's a reason that the NFL and the NBA and MLB all have about the same number of teams, low 30s. Now, granted, they're going for the biggest markets in our country. Like, I don't want to see small towns like Ann Arbor and Statesboro and Auburn not have college football programs anymore. Like, that's the best part of college athletics. But... We just need a couple more championships to vie for, I think. Okay. It's, it's very interesting. We want to know what you think. Uh, let us know. What would you change the name of the ACC to? What would you change the name? All the directional conferences. In the chat, in the comments, what would you change the name to if we're not going to do directions anymore? Uh, and, you know, we're not going to do numbers. There's no point in doing numbers when you add different teams each year. Like you said, you played in the Big Ten forever, and it was never the 10 teams. We want to know what you think. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking us out. Do us a favor. We are almost to 100,000 subs. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and turn those notifications on. We'd really appreciate it.